Hi, welcome to the Frugal Frau. I'm Suki, your host. And today I want to show you how I do my antiquing process when I'm doing red as my final color. And I have a project that I've already made, or I should say my husband made it. And I did do a video about this pegboard, but I want to show you that the pegboard, it has uh, some divots in and things like that. And I sanded those out a little bit because this was hand planed and the wood wasn't perfect wood. There was probably where a water pipe might have been starting in this particular piece of wood. But what I want to say is that I look at a piece and, you know, when I'm trying to make it look old and antique, I look at, well, where might it have worn naturally over decades or perhaps a century or two of use? And then I sand those down a little bit more securely. And that's kind of how I begin. And I may do more sanding later on in the process. Now, my first step in this is just to take a dark stain. And I'm just using here a leftover stain that I have from another project. And that's what I'm going to begin with. All right, I have my stain stirred and I'm ready to start staining. Now, because this is a pegboard, I actually like to do the pegs first. So I just take a rag, that's my method of staining, and I get around the pegboard, and I don't necessarily, necessarily get to the very bottom of that. I'll get that when I get the actual peg board that's supporting the pegs itself. And I just carefully go down each peg first, and when I'm done, then I will do the board. So, and I don't worry because this is not the final coat. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just what I use for an undercoat. So, once I get this all done, I'll show you what the stain looks like. And it will be dry and then we can proceed to the next step. All right, I can, you can see I'm almost done staining and uh, my antiquing process I always use a dark stain and it really doesn't matter what color dark stain uh, for my first coat and it really doesn't matter how well or poorly I actually stain the wood and it's stained a little unevenly anyways because it's got a lot of flaws in it it was just an old birch tree that we cut down and it was trying to die anyways and it was going to become a hazard. My stain is now set enough and dried enough that I can begin my first coat. Now, I'm going to do yellow on the first coat. I'm ne not necessarily gonna paint everything yellow, but I decided I would just do the base of this thing yellow. And it's not that I won't put yellow in other places, I probably will, but what I want you to know is you could actually use any color you wanted. But for the look that I want for the red, I always start with yellow. And then I'm also going to do a light bright blue. So these are kind of what I call very garish and ugly colors, but they will prove to be a good little hints of exposed color for under the dark red that I'm going to do. And so I simply just have to go like this. And I'm not even using high quality paint here. I use flat paint. And I use pretty low quality paint because it doesn't need to be good quality. It's just another undercoat. And uh, this can is getting a little thick now because it's down to the base, but that's all right. I use it up anyways. All right, I have my base yellow. And notice I did not try to cover it completely as if I was going to, uh, you know, paint something bright yellow and want it to be solidly bright lit yellow. I let stain shine through. And now I'm just gonna do little bits here and there of yellow on the pegs and the trim. Get the end to why not? And I'll leave some of, I'll leave it off as of some of them. Because the end result is to be 
very haphazard as if it was painted many different colors over the years and then wore off very unevenly so that will work and I think that's enough of yellow so I'm going to uh, close up my can and put my brush to soak and wash it up and then I will proceed to the next color well I have my blue mixed up it's my second color that I'm applying and first I'm going to just do the pegs and then the trim but I'll get these pegs done first fairly thoroughly but not necessarily completely and And after I do this color, well, I'll think about doing a third color, maybe. We'll see. Now, where I've placed the yellow on the trim, I'm just going to just go around that loosely so that some of that yellow shows. I believe this side is the top, which will never actually be seen, but I do it anyways because you should. And I know this looks awfully garish, and I agree, but it won't when we're done. So don't be afraid to experiment with colors for undercoats. And so this is just a matter of personal taste, of course, and also a matter of, well, your, your basic style. And what you might just have laying around, because it's a great way to use up those oddball extra cans of paint you might have laying around and you, that way you're not wasting them you're putting them to good use which you know if you're frugal like me you're going to use every last drop you'll notice I don't use a very good brush for this whole process because it's not necessary I just use one of my old brushes and it's just another way that you can extend the life of your brushes as they wear out. Instead of throwing them away, keep them for projects like this, where you don't need to get a solid, beautifully painted surface. All right, that's probably enough. So we just have to wait for that to dry and now consider another color after this. Okay, I have here a small dish of a very slimy green color and this is the last of this green color I have and what I'm going to do is this time instead of using a brush I'm going to use a rag and I'm going to dab it in the paint and dab it on the tops a little bit around here and, and why am I using this color well kind of to simulate you know the greasy hands that have gone on this <laughs> over the years without it like, looking dirty greasy, but just kind of worn and well used. And it's kind of a lighter color than I would think I would have to use, but it'll be just fine. Because really, when I get done, it'll be darker if it shows through in those spots because there will be stain on top of the final coat of paint. So I just a little bit here and really I'm I'm totally being haphazard with this so don't be try to don't try to do this exact there's no reason to fret over exactly and even which way your strokes go is irrelevant because not enough of any one color of the undercoats will show through to really make it look that weird or that haphazard my next step is to distress it with sandpaper and that's just to get the effect of it getting worn off over the years. So when I distress I think about well what parts are going to get worn off well like the top of the pegs and the paint's not even thoroughly dry yet but if that doesn't matter I do it anyways. It just kind of adds to the character of it. And so underneath the pegs of course and then Sometimes things are rubbing up against the uh, actual pegboard itself. The top edge of the peg really wore, wear more than the bottom edge. So I'm not, I just 
don't be, sh don't be too shy about this. And uh, I use older pieces of sandpaper for this too. And then, <laughs> then I can justify throwing them away afterwards. Because they won't be good for anything else afterwards. After I'm done with them. All right, I think that'll do for my purposes. Okay, I'm ready for my antiquing, crackling uh, step. What I have here is wood glue, and it's a caseous-based glue, and so that's what you want. You don't want some kind of really synthetic Gorilla Glue or super glue or anything like that, because that won't work. And I've diluted it, but it's about four-fifths glue, one-fifth water. So it's the consistency of heavy cream. And so what you want to do is just paint it on fairly thickly where you want it to crackle. So I might not do this everywhere. And I might want that one to crackle, but maybe that one. And then I'm just going to do a little bit at a time and then go over it with my top coat, which in my case is red. And it'll be the first top coat. I might do a second coat. We'll see. And I have that prepared here. Notice I'm using chip brushes really cheap brushes because this glue is going to ruin the brush. <laughs> and so you don't want to use good brushes for this. And so I'm just going to do about half of this board because I need to get on to it and not let it dry too much or the crackling won't work. All right, so that's enough of that. And I'm just going to stick my glue brush here. And then I'm going to take my red paint. And it's not really dried yet. So I just want to maybe start on places where it doesn't really matter that I didn't put the glue because I want the glue to be a little drier. But I want to be ready to go because the glue does start setting up fairly quickly. Now I did a little test patch way down here, so I'm going to see what happens there. And this crackles because the paint on top of the glue actually makes the glue shrink, or the glue shrinks and then the paint cracks. So that's how that works. Now I know they sell expensive crackling things in some of the craft stores, but you don't need to do that. You can just do this. And so since my coat, my final color is going to be red, I'm going to do a fairly thick coat of red. And you can see I just let some of this color show right through. And uh, let's see, hopefully this crackles. Sometimes it crackles more than other times. I did this one time in the bright sun and it was that was a mistake. It was uh, it was just too hot and too sunny and the glue was just drying too fast and it barely crackled. So I need to be cognizant of that. Well, I have let my paint and glue mixture dry overnight so that it would be thoroughly dry. And now I simply want to take some sandpaper and I have some 60 grit here and 120 and I want to just sand down a few spots to uh, make it look more worn out. And so I'm just going to do that, not everywhere, just in a few spots here and there. All right, I think I've done enough to my satisfaction. And Again, there's no formula for doing that. It's just a matter of how much you think you want to do or how much you think it needs. How aggressive you want to be or how aggressive you want it to look beat up. It's just all a matter of personal taste. So now, but once you sand it, you do want to get rid of all the dust and ditzels. So just wipe it down quickly. And then I'm going to do the very final part of the process, which is putting on stain. Now, originally I said I was going to do this with a water-based stain, but 
I've decided to go ahead and use oil-based stain like I did on the base layer. And the reason why is because even though it's going to take a bit longer to dry, you know, a few days, it's just a much better result in my opinion. So I will open this up and give it a gentle stir. And of course I put my gloves on and I tend to use my gloves on until my gloves until they get holes in them so I just carefully place them where they won't mess up anything else. All right, there wasn't, there's not a lot of stain left in this particular bottle, but we'll just wipe that off. And now I'm just going to start staining. And I'm going to start with the, with the pegs and uh, work my way down with each peg. And again, I'm not going to be too particular about exactly how I do this. And at the end, if I feel like it needs another coat of stain, well, I'll just go ahead and give it another coat of stain. Now again, because I'm doing this on painted wood, it is, uh, it's gonna take actually a little bit longer to dry because it's not getting absorbed into unfinished wood. So you're not going to want to touch this for a while. You want to leave this alone. So do it in a place where you can let it sit and just dry and set up. And to protect the finish, I sometimes go over it with wax, just a paste wax, after I'm done. And uh, my favorite paste wax is no longer made, which is unfortunate, but you can actually make homemade paste wax. All right, I am done putting stain on. Now I'm just going to give it a final little wipe, just so I don't have any big drips or anything. And evening out the, uh, the patina here. And if I need to, I'll take a dry rag and wipe off any excess. So, just to lightly wipe. So I have in one hand, a very saturated rag, and the other hand I have a very dry rag, and I'm just finessing it a little bit. There, I think I'm done, so let me hold that up. And uh, there you can see it's got a slightly different tone to it now. It's a much warmer tone than the previous red, although the other red was quite warm. And uh, I think that'll be just fine. I just need to let it dry for a few days before I do anything with it, and then I will hang it up. So, I'm happy with that. I hope you will experiment with your own antiquing and let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you really experiment and have fun with your projects at home too. So, my pegboard is finished and we decided we could hang it up right away. Our room was warm enough and the stain dried fairly quickly and we'll leave it a few days before we actually use it. But here it is and the antique red looks really nice against the green and the cream and uh, it matches the stairwell 
enclosure which I'm looking at which you can't see in the picture but we'll show you that in a minute okay I just wanted to swing over to the other side of my basement room here and show you that we use the same red antiquing process on the cabinets that we use to enclose the stairwell and a, uh, another little cabinet to the side which actually hides some plumbing but has room for other things too so I just wanted to show that off and you can see the antiquing here and the blue and the yellow showing through a little bit but tempered of course by the stain that I put on top okay I wanted to show you that I also use the red antiquing finish on the bench which sits below the pegboard and uh, you can see that it does match and uh, there's two supports one on each end of the bench and I uh, just topped the bench with a couple of laminated pieces of board on top and simply put a spar varnish finish on top of those. And then on the wall here, this is also homemade paneling. And on this wall, I painted it green and then I put uh, a dark stain on top of that. And it's just a nice combination that I really like. It's actually kind of a garish green, but that's all right. I tone it down with the stain. But I like my little red and green theme down here, so I kept it going. 